Today, looking at two things, the sunset and the rainbow. The sunset and the rainbow. I grew up in Trinidad, in the south. Well, actually, not south. I live in the city called Princess Summer, a small city. I grew up there and then spread out. I began to work for the church when I was about 20, 21, 22 years old. <laughs> no check. I didn't leave. I didn't leave the job. I am now officially working with the official church for the first time. Think about that. Probation is closing. I'm going to read your statement from volume 3 of the Testimonies, page 72. She says, The Lord made man upright in the beginning. He was created with a perfectly balanced mind. The size and strength of all its organs being perfectly developed. Man was a perfect type of man. No, Adam, sorry, was a perfect type of man. Every quality of mind was well proportioned, each having a distinctive office, and yet all dependent upon another for the full and proper use of any one of them. I've said over from time to time that we think we live in the city but if the focus is not here then we are not here I hope that we would not be here for real so we can live longer and healthier and I heard this discussion this morning I'm not talking about what was said I'm talking about living for Jesus. The song says, living for Jesus, the life that is true. Trying to please him in all that I do. You know that song? Yeah. Don't sing it, don't sing it. I just want to ask. God had just finished addressing the great wickedness in the earth. All the animals outside the ark were destroyed. All the little children youth, young adults and adults, and the uh, age were destroyed. All life outside the ark was killed. This was their payday. We're talking about the payday. God doesn't pay in currency that we need, but he pays. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole I want thee forever to live in my soul pray for that pray for that because if you expect to live in heaven with me you need to have some of these songs in our in our back our holiness back so God had just finished addressing the wickedness all life outside the ark was killed. If as we walk out of here to go to our homes where we reside from time to time, and we heard about a mile ahead of us that there is a tidal wave, we'll call it, on the waters of Brooklyn, that's coming towards you, downtown Brooklyn, and it will stay unmoved for maybe just about nine hours. As it stays, it rises. What would you do? Don't answer me. Don't answer me. The communion service we are going to have takes all of that into consideration. What are we here for? 
She says, God had just finished, I'm reading it over again, addressing the great wickedness in the earth. All the animals outside the ark were destroyed, and the, the little ones, the children, the youth, young adults, and adults, and the age were destroyed. All life outside the ark was killed. And you're going to work, and you're hearing this is happening. What would you do? And you left the children home, if you have children. Mommy has gone to the bank to get some money to buy some food, but the children are home. Now she can't get to the children because of the water. And the father ain't home, he had to work. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Three to five. Let's read that, please. Genesis chapter six. Three to five. Sometimes I don't like these Bible talks because it, it becomes hurtful. It hurts. Genesis chapter six. Oh, that was Exodus. Verse three, chapter six. Genesis says, "And the Lord said." What is it said? My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. That's all. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came and unto the daughters of men and they brought children and men of renown. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that the imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only O-N-L-Y evil continually only Verse 6. And God was upset with himself. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. God. And God don't make errors. But the Holy Spirit said he repented him. He was sorry. He made man. After he made man. And all of this stuff came up. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Is God saying that this morning? He's still saying it. Mm. Because we are still here. We haven't gone back home yet, so we are still here. And he's wondering why they're taking so long. Well, he can't, he doesn't know. But he wants it to come to a close. And when you get to my stage, you really want it to stop. Otherwise, how long would I expect to live mm. like this? Genesis 6, it says, And when the time is rich, God told Noah, 120 years, no more. That's it. No more extra time. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, Noah's preaching and building of the ark was God's way of announcing to the world God was announcing to the world day is dying in the west see. he's telling you where is he said day is dying in the west your sun is about to set John 9 and verse 4 John chapter 9 and verse number 4 
John 9. God can count. He can measure. He can release information. John 9 and verse number 4 says what it says. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. I put still in. The night cometh when no man can work as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. And the light is going. The light is going. God is the establisher of boundaries for this earth and every living thing. Beloved, God establishes the eternal breaking, the internal breaking system in this world. And when the time is reached, God told Noah, 120, and that's it. God has already established a working program for this earth. Exodus 20. Our oh, program is a six days shall thou what? Labor. Labor. And do all that. All the program is God says, I have already told you how many days you have for work. Some of us in here work on Saturdays, you know. You say Saturday. Are you here working Saturday? How do I know? I see it in your face. I don't have to see you with stuff in your hand. I see it in your face. Were well, you still working? What a mighty God we serve. Still working. God has already established the work scheme or schedule for his creatures. We find it in Exodus 20 and verses 8 to 11 says, Six days shalt thou labor. Some of you are still working today inside of here. How I know? I see it. See what? You're not resting. You need to rest. How I know? Because you want to sleep. <laughs> I don't like preaching anymore. It's not something to love. Because I am hurt also. Six days shall no labor and do what? All. all. The word is all. Volume 4, page 30. A, a continual transgression of the law, of natural laws, is a continual transgression of God's law. If you're not resting, you're destroying God's law. What did I say? If I am not resting, I'm destroying God's law. Six days you have for work. Not because you're seven days. Not even resting on the Sabbath. Still working. And you have one nice clothes, but you're working. How I know? I gotta go out. I gotta go out. Oh, I know, because they tell me that. Right inside of here. I kind of wish I had another way to say it. When Jesus says the night coming, he meant the physical sun in the heaven is about to depart as an event in, as an event in natural, in natural world. Let me, read it. Let me say it again. When Jesus says to us, the night cometh, he means the physical sun in heaven is about to depart as an event in natural world. The sun is going, going where? Under. To come back the next, the following day. When it comes back, some of us would not be there because we are dead. In the time of Noah, it was not the sun but the, it was not the S-U-N, it was the S-O-N. Same song. Kind of have the same sound. John chapter 3, St. John chapter 3. 
verses 19 and 20, St. John chapter 3. Sometimes I wish I could just sit down and watch and pray as I sit and watch alone. Hmm. St. John chapter 3, 19. Verse 19 says, And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Verse 20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. People like to be in the dark. I want to see where I am. I want to see. No, the absence of light is the cause of darkness. John 3, 19 says, we read in John chapter 3, St. John chapter 3, sorry, 19 and 20. 19, it says, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. Christ says, I am the light of the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Would God clean this world up? Yes, he will. Will he move us out if we are not doing right? Yes, he will. Would he apologize? No. God will not apologize for destroying sin. He will not. That's why it's in the days of Noah, the record in Genesis 6 5 says that the imagination of the heart was only evil continually. The light was gone out in their lives. On campus where I went to school in Trinidad, you know how the boys groups and the girls groups and the girls groups. And you thought, I thought, because you know, when you're a young student in school and you don't know the church behavior on the campus in the day or the night, you get a little not clear as to what's going on around you. And you live that lifestyle when you leave school, if you're not converted. I'm encouraging you to be converted, meaning to, be, to change the lifestyle, the behavior, the things we love to do more than that which we should not be doing. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That is why in the days of Noah, the record in Genesis 6, 5 says that the imagination of the heart was only evil continually. The light was gone out in their lives. Patrix and Prophets, page 6. 569, 596, she says, it is a law of the mind that it, that it gradually adapts itself to the subject on which it is trained to dwell. So what, 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 what keeps your attention? Is it the computer? Is it the phone? What's, 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 what's holding your attention? What's keeping you? What is keeping you strong or sexually active? Oh yeah, I could say that in the pulpit because it's the business in the Bible. Why are we behaving like that? Why? I don't know. Why are you behaving like that? I'm not saying you hear the children. I was speaking to one of the boys yesterday, fourth child. And um, daddy so and so and so. I said, boy, listen, when you uh, on the job, your job is to do what the job called for, and the story over. Leave the people alone. You're not there to scold anybody, you're not the parents. Do what the job is calling for. Spend time on the job. When they finish, go home. Incidentally, I said that. 
go home. But he announced it. So, but he, I said, I said, listen to me. God placed you here. Stand up for him. That's all you're here for. Stand up for him. And somebody took, somebody mentioned that to me last night. God stand up for you. You stand up for him. Amen. To be clean. The song says, clean before the Lord I stand. I have to stand clean so I can be ready for the resurrection when Christ comes. Now, so he said it is law, it is a law of the mind that it gradually adopts itself to the subject on which it is trained to dwell. And so even though Noah found grace in God's eyes, the people were didn't care. Paul said in Titus 2.11, he says, all men have grace available to them, but don't want it. Only a small number accepts that grace back in the days of Noah. And as a result, seven were saved. All the rest perish. So the group that's coming to go to glory before when Christ comes. Is it going to be a small group, a large group? Do you know? Would it be people from this group right here? Would you know? Is it going to be your children or my children? Who, whose children? Who are you interceding for? The people on the block? Who? Who are you trying to tie God down for? Is it daddy? My concern as a human being right now is about people's salvation. You know. Not about your job, you know, it's your salvation. That's my concern. Everybody in here is my job. I pray for you all, you know. So you can walk right, you know. Probation closing, you know. Letter 12, letter 123. Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts, I'm quoting, destroy the soul. The converting power of God changes the heart. But evil thoughts destroy the soul. Refining and purifying the thoughts. Unless a determined effort is made to keep the thoughts centered on Christ, grace cannot reveal itself in the life. Let me say it again. Unless a determined effort is made to keep the thought centered on Christ, grace cannot reveal itself in the life. Cannot. Seven. Remove Noah. Six. All those alive. That's right here. Letter 123. I didn't make that. I didn't make it up. My encouragement to you is get on the Lord's side. I'm not trying to be anybody's sweet boy. I'm not into that. What a mighty change he wants to see in my life. What a mighty change he wants to see in your life. When you go home today, covenant with God to change. In this building they call it change. Change is French. Change. I don't know your word, but change. Seven included Noah, and the ark represented all who had accepted the grace and lived for Jesus before the flood. Seven. I'm going to cut this thing short. Today. The number of people who might be saved might be smaller than the group that Noah had. I don't know. The number would be saved fellow servants for the flood. God gave or made a covenant with mankind via Noah in Genesis 9, 8 to 13. Notwithstanding the foregoing text, we still see tidal waves, tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, mudslides, 
wars, chemical warfare, crimes. And we read in Matthew 24, 12. I'm reading it, I'm just passing on. These omens are for you to know that darkness is covering this earth again. Again! When we were looking at the media and the screen here, I saw some countries and they call them of people that are not going to heaven. Don't talk about Ukraine. That's not our issue. We are here. We are facing each other right here. We have to change it right down here. Don't ask people, how many people died? No. Let me change my life down here. Notwithstanding the foregoing text, we still see tidal waves, tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, mudslides, and chemical warfare, crimes, etc. And we read in Matthew 24, 12. Let's read that. Matthew 24, verse 12. Verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We used to say home back in the day, small icy hut. You ever saw icy hut? How you could be icy and hot at the same time? That's what they call it, icy hut. There's no icy hut, nothing. You're either hot or cold. And they're different things. So these omens are for us to know that darkness is covering this earth again. Zephaniah 114, and I'll read the scriptures. Jesus tells us when he when, he, when we look for him and they will when we look for him Jesus tells us when to look for him actually Matthew 24 26 and here we will know that the time for his coming is nearer than it was before in the days of Noah God announced the time before the preaching of the gospel or the building began Genesis 6 now let's read Genesis 6 and verse number 6 verse number 3 Genesis 6 verse number 3 there are only some texts I will feel that I could read it because it's cut. Verse number 3. Genesis 6. Verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Why? For that he is also, he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be 120 years. If God were to announce 120 years for this earth now, would you be happy? Wait, that's, 100, that's 120 years. You won't be happy? No, sir. What do you want him to do? Now we this kind of life going on. That's right. <coughs> Today, we have a similar warning from heaven where God has made another announcement. Revelation 10, 1 to 6. I'm not reading it. God's modern Israel is given a message to trumpet to the world, to prepare it for the coming of Jesus. Revelation 4, 24, verse 4. God's last day begun 172 years ago. What did I say? God's last day call begun 172 years ago October 22 1844 well, a little less between I didn't number it off the door of mercy is about to be shut the sun S U N and not the S O N the sun is about to be set probation is closing where do I start I'm not trying to look at what's happening on the, on the earth, or what's happening with us in here as individual Christians, men and women. How is it with our souls? That is my big focus, you know. Not about all the other nice things, but how is it with my soul? My, my personal soul, how is it with me? Am I still always feisty? Jumping out to fight? Cursing? Wasting God's time, am I still like that? How am I going to be changed if I am not actually making desires or changes indicate that I'm going to be living somewhere else? How am I? 
Am I am I crude? Am I coming to you the wrong way? I have three siblings alive. Just three. Two passed. They were taken. Ask me that another time, but don't ask me that today. One sibling lived in Michigan, two in Trinidad. They were all younger than me, but they were older than you. They were older than most of you in here. The last brother is what? Uh, 60 somebody, I forgot. But you know what? I gave my life for thee. What else can I give for you? When you leave this building here and you go home today, what changes would you love to have decided on making before the new day starts? Don't tell me. I don't need to know. It is you and Jesus. I don't need to know your private business. That's not my job. It's to encourage you to walk right. To encourage you to what? Walk right. When the question in the judgment is asked, he will not ask me about you. Ask about me. He'll be measuring my rewards according to what I have put into his will. The door of mercy is about to be shut, about to be closed. The sun is about to go down as a final deal. Christ is about to come. Yes, turmoil and confusion, labor troubles, thought, the working of trust and result of labor, unions and strikes and conditions of life in the city are constantly becoming more and more difficult. Serious troubles are before us. And for many families, removed from the cities will become a necessity. Something big and stupendous, the supernatural, is about to happen. Solomon said in, Psalm, in Proverbs 6 and verse 6, Observe the act and take warning. You know what's an ant? You was an ant? Not in your mommy, you know, mommy sister. I think about a creature called an ant. You ever saw it? How big is it? About six feet? How many feet? Is that a thing? Solomon says, look at the ant and study it. And then decide what you're going to do with the rest of your life. The ant is a little creature that so stores its supply where you can't find it. So I can't tell you, I don't know where it is. It's under the ground. We have to change. The world is saying, let's come together. The Protestants are saying, they want a new togetherness. These are all calling not for unity in Jesus, but a one world something. What's the word after one world? Order. Order. Just check in your head. Fewer and fewer will become the sympathetic cords which bind men to brotherhood and to fellowship. The natural egotism of the human heart will be worked upon by Satan. Oh yes, I'm reading from Selected Messages, Volume 3, page 418. I'm closing. He will use the, con the con uncontrolled wills and violent passions which are never brought under the control of God's will. At this time, we must focus on sending all and every sinful thought and action into the heavenly sanctuary and have our characters cleansed before our probation closes in the sanctuary. Sisters and brothers, I have preached years ago and all these nice things I have a different focus. My focus is, you want to go to heaven or not? That's my focus. Period. You want to go to heaven or not? You want to just have a good time? But I don't have time for that. 
My aim is to encourage you to get up, stand up, walk right. Amen. That's my aim. This is my beloved brothers, the sister. My sister, let me leave that out. Each person who enters life comes with two decisions. One, to live for Jesus, or to live for the devil. That's it. Who determines the effect of the decisions made? Mommy and Daddy. Yes, I just said it. Mommy and Daddy. Yes, they will come big, but you have to plant them before they start to walk. That's your job. If you're giving birth to newcomers, make sure you instill in them that which they need to know. The SDA Church will have its last test when the National Sunday Law is put in operation. Are you afraid of that? No. That's not your job. Put your heart in the hand of the Lord. Yes. That's your job. The other people, let them take care of the stuff. That's, that's not what you focus on. You're focusing, I want to see Jesus and stay with him. That's your focus. We are in the great day of atonement. The time when we must be afflicting our souls, confessing our sins, humbling our hearts before God, and getting ready for the great conflict. Christ triumph, 3-3-0. Three, three, you must learn to connect world events with Bible truth. Hmm. What did I say? World events with Bible truth. Day is dying in the West, you know. Heaven's about to give us rest. But if your life is in a mess, hmm. you will have miserably failed your test. Hmm. Jesus is asking you, change. This service <coughs> we have today is to give us another chance to change. To do what? To change. Remember, this service that we're having here now is because God wants us to experience a change. Anything wrong with that? Father in heaven, thank you for your saints. Thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this communion service. Bless us as we recommit our lives to you in the blood of Jesus. So he would have died for me and I would not disappoint him. Bless the entire family that's here today in Christ's precious name.